will not try to be good. What are you mumbling, Willie? Madam. I think you mean nothing of importance, don't you, Willie? Yes, um. Well, please try to be as busy as a bee without the buzzing. <laughs> Quiet, children. Do, Willie. I don't want to keep you in on a lovely day like this. But I have no alternative when you're unruly. What made you write in this book? Teacher's an old maid and I hate school. Because I do hate school. But discipline is good for all of us, Willie. And in after years, you'll be grateful for an education. Maybe. Why, Willie, what makes you say that? Because I hate being grateful. Oh, I know it's the spring, and I feel it too. But everybody has duties and responsibilities, Willie. Few of us are able to live as we'd like to live. So you may as well learn to make the best of things, if you can't escape them. Yes, ma'am. Um. Can I go now? Yes, Willie. You may go now. Oh, naughty again, eh? Yes, ma'am. Well, I've always liked the naughty ones best. Why, Margaret, what a thing to say to him. Well, I do. The good ones never seem to have the necessary imagination or initiative. I know, but I never imagined you felt that way, too. Margaret, tell me, do you ever feel tempted to kick over the traces? Every spring. I never do, though. Too old and too ugly. Now, if I were your age and looked like you and knew what I know now... You demoralize me completely. I've been longing to smash everything and run amok all day. When I was 28, a man smiled at me once in a movie. He looked like a mighty nice man, too. Really? And what happened? Nothing. That's just it. You mean you didn't smile back? Of course not. I was much too well brought up. But ever since then, I've wished I had. I went back there for years, but I never had the chance again. Men don't smile at me much, either. Well, in your case, it's those eyeglasses you will wear and the books you carry and those flat-heeled shoes. Well, you know yourself, I couldn't hold on to the job a minute without them. If I were your age, I wouldn't want to hold on to it. But I've got to hold on to it, Margaret. Jobs are scarce and hard to get. Jobs where a girl is safe. Well, if I had my youth over again, I wouldn't be so anxious to be safe. Miss Gladden? Oh, for me? Yes, Miss Gladden, I picked for myself. Oh, thank you, Sally. Violets and spinach both grow out of the earth. I'm spinach, a useful vegetable and full of iron. But nobody cares much about spinach. I never had a chance to be a violet, much as I'd like to be. But you have. You're full of nonsense today. Dangerous, unsettling nonsense. What's got into you, Margaret? It's my birthday. I'm 40. You begin thinking a lot of things when you suddenly find yourself 40. But how can you suddenly find yourself 40? You can. Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, congratulations. What for? Saturday afternoon. How about the mending? Oh, 
what's happened to you? Nothing yet, Granny. Where'd you get this dress? I bought it. Out of the money I saved up, and I've kept out just enough to go to the Savoy for tea. Have you lost your wits? No. But I've just realized I'm 25. I'm getting older every day. Do you realize that, Granny? I'm getting older every day. But uh, we all are, aren't we? Yes, but we don't stop to think about it. Life goes on, and before we know it, our time is up, and maybe we haven't really lived at all. Lived? Silk. Real sheer silk. Lovely thing. One wearing would probably finish them. Not serviceable at all. But I don't care! Damn! Ever since Father died, and you came to live with me, I've done exactly as you said to do about everything. I've worked hard, I've worn good, plain, serviceable clothes, I borrowed books from the library to read, and I've saved my pennies. I'm sure that was a wise way to live. But I'm tired of being wise. That sort of life is all anyone wants or expects when she's old. But I'm young, and it's the privilege of the young to be foolish. I'm pretty. Do you realize that? I'm going to have one day of freedom from rules and regulations, from worry and responsibility. Yes, and from duty. For this one day, I'm going to do exactly as I please and darn the consequences. You understand, Delilah, don't you? You've been caged up, too. Well, what the heck? You have a fling. Oh, the window's open, Anne. I know it. She's gone. She'll never come back. The cats will get her. Other birds will fight with her. She'll starve, perhaps. But it'll be worth it to her to be free again. Watch the hack. I'll be back in a minute. All alone? Good luck. Has your mother told you it isn't safe for a pretty girl like you? Won't be safe for you if my brother finds you here. I can take care of myself. Don't worry about me. I won't. Waiting for your brother, eh? Is that the best you can do? You'll see in a minute. He's six feet two, and he has a very quick temper. Oh, that's too bad. I'd hate to hurt him on your account. Hey, you're kind of a cute trick, you know. police officer if you don't go away and leave me alone. Go ahead, call one. Nothing, eh? Playing hard to get. That's okay by me. You'll soon melt. They all do. you not to come here. Every cop in town knows you by sight. And as soon as they find that body, they're sure to start looking for you. They ain't found the body yet, have they? So what? Hey, some David stole our hack. What, with a stiff in it? What, is, what does he mean with a stiff in it? Well, we didn't have a chance to dump him, Chief. Do you mean to tell me you rubbed him out and left his body in the car? That was a hot car. We stole it for the job. And it's parked right in front of this door. Well, we were going to throw the guy in the river the minute we plugged him, but we saw a couple of suspicious guys looking, so... We just drove one. Yeah, and then we find another spot and some kids breeze by. Yeah, we decided we'd wait until the night. I see. So you bring him here. Hey, you don't have to worry. He's all covered up in the back. Covered up with what? With an overcoat, ain't he? What overcoat? Uh, your overcoat. My overcoat. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, Chief. I forgot. As I was going out the door, I grabbed your overcoat by mistake and... Well, I didn't think until afterwards. So, you covered him up with my overcoat, with my name in the label, and it's still over him. Is that the setup? Mm -hmm. I guess it is, Chief. Red, I don't know how long you want to live, but I know how long you're going to live if you don't get that coat. Just ten hours. Yeah, but look, Chief... Grab Handsome's hack and follow that dame. No rough stuff, just watch your chance and get that coat. But how do I know where she's went? You'd better find out, Red. 
and read, don't come back without the coat. The big shot car snatcher. I don't need no formal introduction to Smokey. As a matter of fact, I was just sitting there thinking about him. Figure he snatched that big limousine that was reported stolen this afternoon. I didn't hear anything about a limousine being snatched. What time was it missed? Am I aiming to get information from you, or are you aiming to get information from me? Which is working for who? Snuffy? Which side are you on? Are you a stool pigeon or not? If you ain't willing to live up to our gentleman's agreement, it's all right with me. I can sell my information someplace else. What information? You hold out on me and I'll lock you up for obstructing an officer. The car was missed about 2 o'clock. Smokey didn't leave Snakey's till 2.30. So I'm there myself. Just walked out casual like and ain't been seen since. Well, then I guess Slick Capescu's gang got him after all, then. Yeah. That's what his dame thinks. She's going crazy. Says Smokey was on his way to meet her, and nothing would have kept him from keeping the date unless he was rubbed out. Yes, I, I did. Did you want something? Oh, yes, I, I must have. I mean, I did, of course. Otherwise, why would I have stopped you? Exactly. Yeah. Well, my car, you see, it... Uh... What's wrong with it? Oh, heaven only knows. The ignition or the carburetor or maybe the batteries run down. There might be water in the gasoline. You know anything about cars? Not a thing. Oh, I suppose you've got a chauffeur to look after this. Uh, oh, of course. And he's such a good mechanic, too. But, uh, unfortunately, this is his day off. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, isn't it? Well, I can't get the darn thing to go. Would you mind giving me a lift to the nearest garage? Oh, no, I couldn't. I mean, I didn't. Really, this car... Uh, it's see, courtesy I... of the road, you know. It's done every day. It's quite proper. It doesn't mean a thing. Oh, well, I, I suppose I may as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Marvelous luck you're coming along just then. Had you been waiting long? Years and years. Do you often go out alone like this on the chauffeur's day off? Uh, no. In fact, I've never done it before. It's a pretty big car for you to handle, isn't it? Oh, I find I can manage well enough. Though, of course, I've only driven small cars before. You see, uh, this isn't really mine. Well, your brother? Yes. I'm alone in the world. Are you? So am I, really. But I thought you just said that this... Oh, not my real brother. Uh, someone who helped me once in a very critical situation. Helped me unwittingly, too. That was a wonderful part of it. Isn't this a garage we're coming to? Aren't you leaving me here? Well, no, that is, I mean, yes, but that is, it is a garage, but you just can't go off and uh, abandon me. I simply won't let you go. No? No, that is, not until I find out whether or not they can help me. Oh, very well. You make inquiries, and I'll wait. Promise? Promise. Oh, oh, say, I left my car down the road a ways, a roadster, license PA65. Will you pick it up for me? Sure. What's wrong with it? Nothing. I just want you to hold it here for me till I come for it. Okay, pal. Okay. Here are the keys. Can they take care of it for you? Yes, but it's going to take them a long time. It'll be awfully dull waiting around here. Yes, I suppose it would. I know. We could have tea. That's right. We could, couldn't we? 
Of course. I know I shouldn't. Courtesy of the road, you know. You really think that covers it? I'm sure of it. <laughs> Very well, then. Where should we go? Well, let me think. You look as if you had a really serious question to answer. What? Oh, oh, tea. Oh, well, how about the Chester Country Club? It's not far off. Surely that's only for members. Well, I thought you'd probably be a member. You, Anyway, when they know who you are, they won't make any difficulties. Who am I? I don't know, but you must be someone important. What makes you think that? Well, this car and the way you look and your manner and everything. Can't always trust appearances. No, I guess you're right, but then just the same. I'll bet we get in without any trouble. Oh, I hope so. Would be fun to have tea there. Maybe Slick's gang picked up the car to give Smokey a ride. I'd like to get on the trail of that car. Might give me a lead to Slick's gang, and if I could round them up, it'd mean promotion. Maybe to the Metropolitan Force. It's a missing car. I saw the license number. And it went right by the police station. Who was in it? I couldn't see it. It went by too fast. But I'll get it. Hey, the speed limit is 20 miles an hour in that town. Was I doing more than that? Well, not more than three times, and we just passed the police station. Did anyone notice us? I think so. I see a cop climbing on his motorcycle and heading this way. Oh, dear. We'll have to lose him. I should think so, yes. You don't understand. There are reasons why it would be awkward if we were stopped. Maybe I can guess one of them. No, you couldn't possibly. I look so innocent, you, you'd never believe I could do anything so terrible. Make it go any faster. What does the speedometer say? I don't want to take my eyes off the road. Well, don't. We're doing 80. Ooh. I wish a truck would come along. What? To delay him, I mean. Look here. There's a right turn just ahead. Now, it's a bad road, and we might just manage it. He couldn't possibly. Where? Here. <laughs> Yes. No. Not now. What's that popping? A pop gun. You mean he's firing at us? He's certainly firing in this general direction. Oh, dear. That's not just for speeding. He must know what I've done. I suppose you know whatever you've done. You've made me an accessory after the fact. Have I? Oh, dear. I didn't mean to. You can get out and leave me if you like. No one's seen you with me. Now to identify you, I mean. Except the fellow at the garage. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. Well, never mind. You get out and, and I'll go back and do something about him. Well, no, 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 no. That's all right. I can take care of myself. As a matter of fact, I'm in the game, too. What game? Wait till we get somewhere where we can talk. Which way? Right. But we're doubling on our track. I know. Maybe we can lose him that way. Snuffy. Trying to keep that car in sight. Follow it, will you? Follow it? What'll I follow it for? Because the car's been snatched. That's what for. No. Yeah. I recognize the license number. I see. And I suppose the cops told you to be on the lookout for it. Hey, I heard you turn stooly. Is that right? That's a dirty lie. I've been a crook all my life. Somebody's trying to ruin my reputation. Yeah? Now, I'm wise, I tell you. I happen to notice the name on the driving license on the shaft there. And I happen to know the police are looking for this car. Oh, dear. I hoped you wouldn't. Then you do know. Well, not everything. Who are you working for? Well, the, the, the government, in a way. The government? Uh, yes, I, I know it's hard to believe. Not hard, impossible. What am I supposed to think you are, a G-woman? Of course not. I suppose you rubbed out that guy back there as a favor to the president. I don't think I quite follow you. You don't, lady. You lead them all.
Perhaps it's indelicate of me to mention it, but I'm burning with curiosity to know who that stiff is behind us. Is someone following us? No, not following us. We're transporting him in comfort. The stiff, the body, the dead man. <laughs> hey! Is that really a body? Well, I haven't examined it in detail, but there is certainly the hand of a dead man back there. Oh! <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. But how did he get there? Well, that's what I expected you to tell me. Well, somebody must have put him there. How true. I mean, before I took the car, I mean, I, I didn't know he was there. Well, I wondered why you were driving him all over Chester County. Good heavens, this is awful. Has he been murdered? Well, that'd be my guess. When people die naturally, you seldom find them wrapped up in the back of a car. We must get away from Oh, no, leave it here. It wouldn't be wise to do that. No, I suppose not. It would be awkward for us, wouldn't it, if somebody noticed it while we were having our tea? Well, what are we going to do? Thanks for that weed. I think the best thing to do would be to park it in the garage in the darkest corner I can find. Now, you go ahead and order, and I'll follow you in a minute. All right. Hey, you, you, you won't leave me, will you? Well, of course not. We'll see this thing through together. Lovely. I knew you'd stand by me. Brooks sure got swell hangouts these days. Yeah, you stay here. I'll look around. Hey, buddy, any place a guy can use a phone around here? Round at the garage. Just follow this path. Thank you. Hey, buddy, where's the telephone? It'll be all right here, won't it? I'm stopping just long enough to have tea. Yes, I guess it'll be all right, but... I'm locking it up because, well, I've got something pretty important in it. Yes, sir, it'll be all right. Is there a telephone here? Right up in front. Thank you. Hello? Give me the police station, please. Well, naturally, the nearest one. That's you, Slick. Rails. I've been trending that dame ever since she snatched the bus. No, I ain't had a chance to get it. Because she picked up some guy and, and ain't left it alone up until now. Now it's here in the garage. At the Chester Country Club. No, no, not a chance. There's lugs all over the place. They're watching the cars. Yeah, it's still here. Look, Slick. I could shoot this place up and probably get away with it, but you said no rough stuff. Okay, okay, just as you say, Slick. Yeah. I'll wait till Handsome shows up. Your paddles are on at the garage using the phone. I want to use it too. Ain't you got one here? Yes, but I ain't supposed to allow anybody to use it. This one won't matter. It's important. I'm connected with the police and I want to report. Very well. Give me the police station in Ferndale. That's you, Kelly? Snuffy. Hey, I picked up those parties you lost and trailed them to the Chester Country Club. I'll be right over. I hope there's not going to be any trouble. Not for you or me, son. If we mind our own business and keep our mouths shut. Fever too? Hot toasted muffins? Honey? And raspberry jam? Is that right, Miss? It looks heavenly. Will you sign for it, Miss? Uh, uh, oh. oh. You can pay if you'd rather. It's just the same, Miss. I'd much rather. It, uh, it makes my father furious to get slips for afternoon tea. He thinks it spoils my dinner. I dare say it does, Miss. Uh, how much? Oh, well. Oh, thank you, Miss. Oh, thank you very much, Miss. I see you, Payne. I didn't know what name to sign to the slip that wouldn't have got us thrown out. Anyway, it wasn't very much. It's worth it just to be here. You're a strange sort of crook. Well, I haven't been a crook very long, you see. How long? Well, just since today. Oh, I suppose I am a crook, even if I never intended to keep the car. But I'm afraid there's no way to prove that to the satisfaction of the court. No, I suppose there isn't. And then there's that passenger in the rear to explain. Unfortunately, he can't speak for himself. 
But I told you, he must have been there when I took the car. I just never looked back. Nor forward either, apparently. I wish you'd let me explain just how it all happened, will you? I certainly will. Considering the mess we're in, I think I ought to know. Well... That car's still here? In there. But you ain't supposed to know me, see? Red Egan's in there, too. He's one of Slick Capescu's gang, and they're dynamite. What's he up to? I ain't found out yet, but I'll keep trying. Okay, take care of yourself. I will. So, you see, I practically had to take the car. Mm, I see. Well, no wonder you had me guessing. What did you mean when you said you were in the game yourself? Are you a crook, too? Well, yes, but I wouldn't have told you, only I thought that maybe... Oh, of course. Well, I'm awfully glad you did. I can't tell you how it's relieved my mind. Relieved your mind? Well, yes. I mean, anyone else, no matter how nice or how willing to help, mightn't have been able to get me out of this mess. But being a crook yourself... Well, of course. I, uh, I suppose this is just the daily grind to you. One of my duller days. I, I suppose you think nothing of getting rid of stolen cars and bodies? <laughs> nothing at all, nothing at all. I'm looking for a stolen car. What kind of a car? A big limousine. It looks like it over there. See you later. Locked, eh? Yeah, he said he had something important in it. Swag, maybe. He was alone, you say? That's right. What kind of a looking fellow was he? Just ordinary, I guess. You can't describe him, huh? Well, no, no, I didn't pay much attention to him. Well, I'll wait here and see for myself. Where are we going now? I have to pick up the car. We'll have to keep driving around until it gets dark enough to get rid of that. Oh, I know. Don't say it. I don't want to think about it. I'll just have to try and forget that he... it. Did you notice that fellow? Yes. Ever seen him before? No. Well, he's been following you, and I rather think he could tell us a thing or two about our silent passenger. He didn't seem to notice us when he passed us just now. He just didn't want us to spot him, that's all. Oh, dear. Oh, somebody's noticed something. Oh, I locked the car. Of course. Oh. What is it? There's a cop sitting on the running board. What do we do? Has he seen us? No, not yet. No, just follow my lead. Head up. Afternoon, officer. Anything wrong about that car? And what would be wrong with it? Oh, I just wondered that we happened to notice the fellow that was driving it, and we thought there was something distinctly fishy about him. Oh, quite definitely fishy. Yes. You saw him then? Well, yes, he was just ahead of us as we drove in. You don't know where he is now, I suppose, sir? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I do. I can point him out to you if you like. I'd like that very much. Well, you find our car, will you, Ann, and get us started? I'll meet you at the door. Come along, officer. He's a tough-looking customer. It's a lucky thing you're armed. I wouldn't want any part of him myself. Don't worry about me, sir. I'll bet not. With that kind, I shoot first and ask questions afterwards. Yeah, that might be the best for all concerned. Oh, there he is. You sure that's the man? Well, just look at him. What's he doing in a place like this? Would you say he had any legitimate business here? I'll soon find out. Hey, you! I want you! All right, go. Bluffing, huh? And don't try any tricks if you don't want a doctor working on what I leave intact. You'll hear about this when I see my mouthpiece. I'm an innocent man. Innocent of what? Innocent of what I done. Or I mean, I'm innocent. You're wanted for stealing Mr. Cameron's limousine. Who, me? If you didn't steal it, what are you doing with it? What am I doing with it? Why, have I got it? You left it back there in the garage. Ah, you're crazy. I left my car out at the gate. At the gate, huh? Yes. What do you call yourself? Red Egan. Well, Red Egan, come along. 
I'll soon find out about that. You get along to the gates. And don't try any tricks, because I'm going to be right behind you. We made it. I know I shouldn't be enjoying this, but I am. It's all right when you get a lucky break like that. You wouldn't be feeling so happy if we'd been caught. I know. So let's not rejoice too soon. We're not out of this yet. Is that your car? You won't believe me. Ask the old guy that's sitting in it. Say, you, do you know this man? Sure I know him. He's a pal of mine. What's he done? I'm told he stole a limousine. Big Blackman, license M812124. Yeah, what about it? Went shooting out that way about five minutes ago. What? Which way? Hey, come back here, you big lug, and take these things off. What do you think I am? That young fella and that girl told me that... Hey! They were the ones in the car. If I get my hands on them, I... He couldn't get his hands on an elephant. Listen. You wait here for handsome. Tell him I'll phone him when I find out where I can connect with him. Okay! It's like a terrible yet exciting kind of tag. <laughs> Played for pretty high stakes. I think for the time being, you better keep your mind on your driving. Oh, that office couldn't possibly overtake us now. We had too big a start. Get going. Our friend, the officer, struck our trail. Oh, dear, what a nuisance he is. He's going to start to shoot. down the hill. We can make that easily. I'll give it a shove and we can coast down. Need any help? No, you just steer. Are the brakes off? No. Well, put them off. Oh, put it on again. You'll have to come out and push, too. We can manage, I think. <gasps> Look! No wonder the gas ran out. That awful cop put a bullet in our tank. Now we'll have to abandon it. No use to get gas now. The tank won't hold it. I believe it would if we can get a cork to fit that hole. A cork? Well, come on, we're wasting time. And don't push from there. If it goes back, it'll go over you. Oh, I never thought of that. Now push. There we go. All right, hop in. Right up the top. Yes, sir. Oh, but uh, we'll need a cork first. Yeah. Hey? Uh, a cork? Yes, you see, uh, we got a hole in the tank. We've backed into a fence with fancy spikes on it. <laughs> oh, reckless driving. Yeah. <laughs> All right, George, you young fellas are always in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> well, sir, by jingo. <clears throat> Looks exactly like a bullet hole to me. A bullet hole? What absolute nonsense. Why, what do you mean? 
What's the matter, Letty? Can't you take a joke? <laughs> you don't look much like gangsters to me. No, sir. <laughs> you look more like honeymooners. <laughs> I don't expect to find machine guns or dead bodies in your car, now do I? Oh, no. <laughs> Certainly not. So you want a cork, do you? Uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'll get you one. Wait, one, two, one, two, four. One, two. Eight one two one two four. Eight one two one two four. And eight one two one two four. Hello, hello, operator. Give me a policeman. Do you think he suspects anything? I don't know. Huh? I want a policeman. Hello. Hello there. Say, what's the matter? All you policemen deep? Say, look at here. I think I got a hold of them gangsters in that car you warned us about. Yes, that car, number, uh, number M9881, and gosh darn it, 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 oh, shut. Well, hold on, I'll get another look at it. <coughs> now, now, look here, young fella, don't you pull no gun on me. Now, tell me, what's the idea of trying to call the police? Well, well, I'll tell you why. We got a warning over the telephone to watch out for a car at all gas stations, number 9, well, I don't remember the number, but I know it's your car. And I'm not going to protect you. Guys, darn it, why should I? Don't know you, never heard you, never seen you before in my life. I'm a law-abiding citizen, and I'm going to do my duty. That's right. But if you're not able to call the police, they can't blame you, can they? Well, who, who's not able? Why, down there, now, you relax. Oh, gosh, darn my... Hey, don't hold tie me, young fella. You'll have the law on you for this. You see me? Help! Help! Hey, officers! Police! Gosh, darn it, I'm going to... I'm going to get a hold of the governor of the state of Pennsylvania. You're certainly going to pay for this. I had stuff for gasoline, madam. Rank negligence, that's what it is. You should see to it before we started. You know I don't like sitting in a smelly gas station while you fill the tank. I'm sorry, madam. I'll be as quick as I can. You'd better be. Sorry, but I'll see you release soon. You can console yourself with the reflection that you are martyr to duty. You're going to finger it, you fucking finger it. And shut up. Let's go, man. Hello. Anyone about? Hello, looking for something? Uh, you don't run this place, do you? Who, me? No, no, I promised to keep an eye on it till he gets back. Yes, sir, where'd he go? Well, he went down that way, he said, to look at a car that's in trouble. He's only been gone a couple of minutes. You can probably catch him if you hurry. Well, maybe I'd better do that. My uh, madam doesn't like waiting. No. Uh, 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 he went this way, you say? Uh, that way. Yes, You'll sir. see him somewhere around the next yes, turn. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. I beg your pardon, but your chauffeur has gone to look for the man that runs this place, and I thought maybe while you're waiting, you might like a cup of tea. Tea? Hmm. Idea's good. The tea probably terrible. Still, it's something to do. There we are. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll see if the lady that's with me won't join us. She's probably bored with waiting, too. Pardon yes, me just a moment. Do. Come and have tea with this lady. There's nobody to wait on you, so you'll have to find it yourself. Now, be charming and keep her interested. Understand? I think so. But where's the little man? I'll explain later. What fun. I love things to happen unexpectedly like this, don't you? When they're pleasant. Well, the tea may not be perfect, but at least we can make it ourselves. That's yeah. a comfort. And I'm pretty good at making tea. Well, that's something. Wouldn't it be fun to own this place and meet all the strange people who stop here day after day? Most of them would be very ordinary and blasted dull. I suppose so. But some would be interesting. One could speculate on where they were going and uh, what their relationships were to one another. I always do that in buses and trains. Don't you? Yes. But I thought it was my own private game. I didn't know anybody else did it. I should think all lonely people do it. I mean, people whose lives aren't very full and who haven't very interesting affairs of their own to think of. Isn't your life very full? It should be. Mine was when I was young and pretty like you. Sugar? Thanks. Maybe you don't think I was young and pretty. You ought to have seen me before the war. And please don't say what war. I wouldn't be so rude. No, I suppose not. Didn't you find him? 
No, I walked all over the place. I couldn't find any sign of a car in trouble. Well, well, that's funny. Well, anyway, I took the liberty of filling both cars while you were gone. Oh, did you? Yes, your mistress. She's anxious to get going. She had some tea, but she's restless. Thanks. Uh, uh, how much you put in her? <laughs> the car, I mean. Uh, 20 gallons. You can leave the money on the counter inside. <laughs> Already, madam? So soon. You've been quick, Mason. You'll telephone and come and see me. I will. And bring this young man with you. He's a reckless look that intrigues me. I always had a weakness for dangerous men. Thanks, if that's a compliment. Of course it's a compliment. I wouldn't have come in here at all if I hadn't thought you were going to give me knockout drops and rob me. But I'm not sorry I came. Goodbye. 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 Come on, no use tempting Providence by hanging around here. Do you think you're doing firing at me, you blasted fool? Do you want to give me a heart attack? Come back here, you blundering calf. Where are you? What are you doing in that car? Why shouldn't I? I mean, is it mine? According to information received by us, this car belongs to Mr. Lawrence Cameron, and it was stolen. What's that? Are you accusing me of stealing my own car? Are you Mr. Cameron? Do I look like Mr. Cameron, you blithering idiot? I never saw Mr. Cameron. All I know is this. He reported the loss of his car, and the last time I saw it, there was a young fella in the government. Where are they now? Perhaps you think I murdered them. Maybe you did. Oh! And maybe you switched cars with them to throw me off the set. Oh! There's that young fella and the girl at the gas station, madam. They have a car quite like this. How clever of you to think of that, Mason. But their car was a Stevens Knight. The car that was stolen was a Stevens Knight. Then why'd you stop me? This car isn't a Stevens Knight, is it? Uh, no, but... Don't dither. Haven't you got the license number of the stolen car? I have. M812124. Well, then, does that number look anything like mine? It's identical. What? That's why he sent me on that wild goose chase. He wanted to switch the license plate when I was gone. And that's why he gave you the team, Adam. What was the license number on this car before they switched? You can't remember, can you, Mason? Uh, no, madam. Neither can I. Where do you claim the place was switched on you, ma'am? On the turnpike, five miles back. But if you think those young miscreants are still waiting for you there, you poor specimen, you do them less than justice. You can tell my man to drive on. Go ahead. The old image is Mrs. Jefferson Breckenbridge. Isn't she a cocker? She's related to half of who's who. She's worth millions. Our license number was T5 
away and there's no watchman. Now we can use it for a hideaway for a couple of hours and clean out the place. Oh, there ought to be plenty of swag, unless there are poor flushers and living beyond their means. You mean you're planning to rob this house? Why not? Oh, I don't want to be a thief. Not really. But you are already. You stole this car, didn't you? Yes, but that awful man frightened me into it. You're going to have a swell time convincing the cops of that if they nab you with it. They won't. They mustn't. We must get it back to his rightful owner as soon as it's safe. With the corpse still in it. Oh, I don't know what to do about him. It. Well, we might leave it here for the family to find when they come back. That's an idea. And as soon as we're safe, send a mysterious message to the police. It's a pity you're losing interest in a life of crime. You certainly get ideas. Where are you going? To do a little belated investigating. Now, you stay where you are for a minute. Like a tough on Brig Gangster, I'd say, old oh, man. One bullet wound and a peach of a shot. He didn't bleed much. Don't. I just thought maybe you'd like to know the car wasn't all messed up. There's nothing in his pockets. But he's got an overcoat over him that seems to be full of incriminating evidence. I think I'll take it in with this and examine it later. really going to break into the house? Why, of course. No use sitting here for several hours. We're trespassing anyway. May as well go a step further and do a bit of breaking and entering. Oh, don't. Please don't. Now, don't be silly. You're cold. I can see you shivering. It's fright. I thought you were enjoying the thrill and danger and excitement of a life of crime. Not now it's dark. Well, you trust me. I'll see you through. Well, I suppose I'll have to if you go on. I suppose I'll have to go, too. I, I can't stay here alone with a corpse. Wait! So much unnecessary noise. Now follow me. Suppose someone's here. There's no lights. Besides, I checked up on that. Suppose there are burglar and I put them out of commission a week ago when I cased the joint. It was too near dawn to go over the place that night. Are you going in the front door? It's the simplest way and the quietest. Besides, the other doors might be barred from inside. And the windows, well, I hate to mess about breaking glass. Now follow me. Jolly little place, isn't it? Oh, I wish I were home with Granny. Granny? I haven't heard of her before. I haven't thought of her for hours. Is she a young Granny or an old Granny? A cocktail Granny or a fireside knitting Granny? A fireside knitting Granny. I'm terribly good. Well, well, it's lucky for you she can't see you now. It is. Or the trustees at my school. Shh. I think we better slip into the back of the house. It's hidden from view by the trees and no one can see it there. Safe. Quite safe. They can't be seen unless someone comes snooping around, and no one's likely to do that. <gasps> what a heavenly kitchen. Not bad. Awfully glad you like it. Oh, I'll have a fire going in a minute, and we'll be beautifully snug. Are you sure the family's away? I'm certain. Why? Well, nothing's been put away properly. Oh, the servants of the rich are very careless. They save themselves as much bother as they can. I hope they were careless enough to need coffee and things like that. <laughs> oh, they have. And biscuits and jam and all kinds of cans and bottled things. Maybe they've even left food in the icebox. Well, but we can't use any of those things. That would be stealing. I know. We can find out whose house this is and uh, leave some money in an envelope to pay for everything. Oh! Well, what is it? Butter, eggs, cream. Well, why not? Don't you see? I don't believe this family's gone away at all. But I tell you, I am certain. Well, when are they supposed to have gone? Days ago. But these things are fresh. They can't have been here for days. At that temperature? Of course. You know, I have a creepy feeling we're going to be unpleasantly surprised here at any moment. It's nerves, my lass. You better watch them. No really successful crook can afford to have them. Besides, who'd know we were here? Hey, 
Hey, Hanson. Come here. Is that the bus up there? Say, it looks like it to me, Red. Come on. Not hot water. Cold if you want to make good coffee. But I've got the kettle boiling. What am I going to use all this nice hot water for? Well, you might boil a couple of eggs. That's an idea. Well, they're around here someplace. Probably inside. They must have Slick's coat with them, too. Smoky Joe's exactly as we left them, but the coat's gone. Shall we go in and get it? No. We'll have them to bring it out to us. Certainly we're going in and get it. Come on. You walk in a superior man as for a crook. Mm, I know. You see, I'm quite unique in my line and practically at the head of my profession. People trust me instinctively, and that's a great advantage. Yes, I can see that. You must have had quite a good education. I served a term at Yale. You see, I'm the black sheep of a very distinguished family. I know that's hard to believe, but then I'm not the only crook in the social register. And some had big companies on Wall Street. Ouch! I think you're right. This one, anyway. He deserves all he got. If it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't be here in all this mess. Well, I can't hold that against him. Say, so he must be pretty badly burned. We ought to do something about him, I suppose. Of course. Melt his butter. I think if we just put this lump on him, it'll melt. I'll bet on it. Say, he'll be quite a tasty dish when you finish with him. How about a little parsley? It's a mercy you hit him when you did. Can't see the thing. Say, what happened to the other one? I might as well put him out of his misery, too. Oh, uh, he had to leave in a hurry. Had something to attend to that uh, wouldn't wait. I think I'll have a look around for him. And I'll just take this along in case. <laughs> We meet again. Well, fortunately for me, it seems. What are you doing with that one, Miss? Buttering him. He got burned. These accidents will happen if people aren't careful. I see the one in the car out there got killed. Yes, but uh, we didn't do that. He's in your car, you know. Did someone leave him there by mistake? I don't know how he got there. Uh, you see, it isn't our car. It's registered in the name of Cameron. Yes, but... And your name's Cameron, isn't it? I might as well own up. I'm Lawrence Cameron, and it is my car. Your car? Then you killed it. No, no. The car was stolen early today. That's why I hailed you when I recognized it. But the body was placed in it after it was stolen. But how did you know his name was Cameron? I guessed it might be. You see, you didn't look to me like ordinary thieves. <laughs> so I traced the license number on the car and came along here to find out. But why here? Because he lives here. Then you're not a crook at all. And we didn't really break in here. No, I just seized the opportunity to prove to you there's nothing in a life of crime. I knew the servants were where you see, and we had to wait and hide someplace till it was dark enough to hide that body. No, I'm not keen to have it found in my car. Of course not. The police are such busybodies and ask so many foolish questions. But if that car was stolen, where did you get it, my child? In the city. It was parked near the curb, and he frightened me, so I jumped into it and drove away. And he and his pal have evidently been on our tracks all day. Then my hunch was right. I knew you wouldn't change those license plates unless you were in serious trouble. And there's nothing I like so much as meddling in other people's affairs. Coffee ice now? Yes. Yeah. Let's have it. Then we'll bundle these ruffians in with the corpse, drive the car back to where this child found it, and let the clever police discover it. <laughs> <laughs> No noise now. And no tricks. You're coming on us, see? Either perpendicular or horizontal. You wouldn't dare to shoot right here in the public street. 
Come on, start stepping. I guess we better. They couldn't very well miss at this range. Come on, get going. They got him, huh? We're red and handsome. You may have seen him. These birds drove up in the car and parked it out front. They're just going to make a break when I grab them. My coat's still in the car? We didn't stop to look. It's there, all right. Oh, so you noticed it? Yes, and what was under it? So you noticed that too, huh? Sit down. I'd like to have a little talk with you. But suppose that we don't want to talk. We're awfully careful about casual acquaintances. Tough guy, huh? Hard. The kind that goes out laughing. I'll bet you're not. You're the kind they have to dope and put a hood on or they drag him screaming to the chair. Steve, are you sure these two are trying to make a getaway when you grabbed them? Sure. Why? Well, they're so cocky, you'd think they were inspecting the Marines. So this is the hideout of the gang. What the? Who in the name of... Well, if you like, you can't shock me. I know all the worst words in the dictionary, so that I resist the temptation to use them. Who are you, anyway? I'm Mrs. Jefferson Breckenbridge, mother of Judge Breckenbridge and grandmother of the present district attorney. Holy Moses! How did you get in here, anyway? Broke the glass on the front door, put my hand through and opened it. I suppose technically you have a case against me, if you feel disposed to press it. Well, why did you want to get in here? Will you tell me that? Certainly. I saw your two henchmen force my young friends to come in here. I was in the car behind, waiting to pick them up. Stupid of them not to make sure they were unobserved, because I was free to send my chauffeur at once for the police. What? Figured I could easily hold your attention till they got here. And here they are. No, you shouldn't, boys. The house is full of cops and there's a car around the whole block. We've got you two to thank for this. I don't know which is the worst, the young one or the old one? Come out, Sergeant. I saw you following me. I knew Mason would have no difficulty in finding you. You're a holy terror, ma'am. With all due respects. Granny! Granny, I'm home, darling. Come and see the man I brought back with me. I'm going to marry him. Oh! So that's what you went after, is it? You and Delilah. Delilah? Is she back, too? 